Okay, so in this next video, this is like the second video for building tic-tac-toe using a list. And the main thing I would like to do in this video is to try to refactor this code. Well, let's talk about what that means. We, um, you know, talk a lot in class about trying to plan uh, and uh, do proper planning before we start writing code. And really done the exact opposite in this series. It's really been just jump into processing and follow along and try to build um, tic-tac-toe and, and some other games to get a feel for how these things work and learn in the process. And uh, that really skipped entirely the planning process. I think the code is much better with this list version because it's much smaller. Um, so in that way it's kind of, you know, uh, more manageable. But uh, it's could be better organized and it doesn't make any use of functions. Planning really is a difficult thing. You know, when you're learning and at the beginning you don't have a lot of experience. So you kind of don't know where, you know, what the shape of the program is going to be or what the different pieces are and how they're going to relate to one another. So that makes it hard to kind of plan it beforehand. But then, of course, without planning it's hard to write code. So it's a uh, a chicken and egg problem in a way, especially uh, when you're first starting out. So um, is there a way to kind of institute some planning after we get a little bit into the code? So we're a little bit in, we're not too far, it's not turned into a big unmanageable mess. But can we kind of, you know, apply planning at this point to clean it up. You know, the benefit of planning is that we kind of have code that's more manageable, that's better organized, it's more, uh, ex ex you know, expandable or extendable so that it's ready to kind of uh, be, you know, finished further and new features are added to it. And I would say, yes, this, this is very possible. This is a good point to do it. We have something that's working. Um, so far it's working. I'll talk in another video about eliminating some of the bugs that are in here. Um, it's, we got to the point where it can detect some winners. So it's looping through here. We'll talk about this in a moment and finding out if there's a winner and just printing out a Boolean. Um, but, uh, but we can see that there's some stuff here, some small stuff that we can kind of do in terms of cleaning up. Okay. So first of all, you know, in our draw loop, we can see like three kind of distinct phases here. We've got a kind of beginning part where we, I'm just going to actually, I'm just a beginning part where we draw the game board. My, my game board was basically drawing rectangles. So it resulted in these lines like a tic-tac-toe game board, plus kind of the outline of the overall large rectangle here. But, um, but we can really, you know, take that out and put it into its own function. You know, I, maybe I call that uh, the background. Background of the game board, whatever you want to call it. So what I want to do is turn it into a function that I'll call draw background, and then I will call it from the same position inside of the uh, draw loop. So I, I need to go to the very end of the draw loop, which is right here, right before mouse press, to begin a new function. We can't place this other function, this new function. We can't place it inside of the draw function. So please be careful about that. And in fact, you probably should save your code at this point and kind of have a new, with a new file name perhaps, like a backup version of it, so that it's easy to go back. Sometimes it's a little hard to undo these changes, especially with indenting. You can sometimes make some indenting problems. Okay, so game board background, I called it. So should be doing the exact same thing. All right, so it's still an opportunity here to write comments. Don't you know, we need those. We need to explain what this function is doing for us. And, you know, this function just executes code. Let's talk about functions again for a moment. What does a function do? It gives us a name for a block of code. So when processing or Python is kind of drawing the game screen by running this draw function, it encounters line 16. And what it does at this point, it, do, it does the fill first and it gets to line 16. It, it, it remembers where it is at this point in the code and knows that it needs to 
jump down to draw background which is down here and execute that code and then come back and continue on with the draw loop. So it just sends it off to run another block of code before it continues with this. And that block of code does what you know we, we had it do, which is draw draws using these two for loops, it draws these rectangles. Um, when it's finished these for loops, you know, it recognizes that the there's no longer any code here at this indent, indenting level. You know, so it knows that this is the end of the function, another function is coming up, so it knows it's finished this function, and it returns back to where it was and continues on. We could do the same thing for here. This is the code that checks the uh, list and finds out if there's ones or twos in there, and puts down the circles and the um, rectangles. So I called that draw. I can call that draw game board. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I can call. I can. Um, loop through list to draw game board based on list so and we just say here loop through rows that's what it does first here it's looping through columns I kind of like these actually, like that. So that should continue running as is. And you know, look at our our draw loop here. It's it just feels so much more organized. Not only is this smaller and this more descriptive. But now we have these nice little chunks, these nice little functions that kind of do one thing and we understand what that one thing is. We understand that function well, hopefully, and it, it, it really is breaking our code down into small chunks. And that is, that would be a sign that we had planned it well. So this kind of refactoring process, you know, can happen throughout development. It's kind of this agile idea that we continue to improve the code organization as it develops. And uh, it's certainly something that you should be considering at this point in the code. Let's talk about checking for winners for a moment because these, these functions are very simple. They don't actually require any information. If you remember, we can pass a information into the function into its local scope we can send information here that gets assigned to local variables all right they're called parameters we don't have any and we can send information back uh, we're not doing that in either of these functions but this function this function is an example of where we probably would want information back this was if you remember this is where we left things off we were looping through the grid we loop through by rows and we check to see if the, the row, each column in the row had the same value. And that meant that, the, that we were going to find a winner. Uh, and then maybe partly after we started this, we realized that, you know, finding zeros, all zeros is an example of them all being equal, but that's a row that hasn't been played yet. So what we really want is a row that's got all the same values but not equal to zero and that, that means it's going to be either a one or a two. That means we have a winner and the player number that won is just you know one of these the value in the list at one of these positions. So if we looked inside a grid uh, index y index zero and found a one then we knew that uh, it was player one who won the game. So that's probably the information we need back if we're going to turn this into a function. But let's just turn it into a function like we did before. So we'll just call it find winners. Okay. And I'm going to paste it right here because we're already at the bottom of the draw loop. And um, and let's say I send that information back. I know printing is not that useful for working with the information. 
That's why this is not all that useful. But if we can send it back and print it up here, well then maybe we can do something useful with it from there. We can store it in a variable or use it in an if statement. Even though we're printing it here, we're able to do other things like, you know, set it to a something else. So how do we do that? Well, we use that return statement. So let's just change this to an if statement first. Let's find out, hey, is this condition true? Are they all equal and they're all, uh, not equal to zero? That means that grid y0, or any of these, that means the number here, or the number here, the number here, they're all the same. That's the number, the player number, who won the game. Let's send that back. Now return does two things. One, it halts execution of a function and sends it back to where it was in the code, just like, just like reaching the end of the function does. So when we reach the end of this function, these loops, it, it stops executing the function, there's no more function to execute, and it returns back to where it left off. We can force it to return back by saying return. We don't need anything here, I don't believe, and uh, you can just send it back, um, send it back uh, without, with, with none. You see what's happening here, we're printing we're printing what it sent back. It did halt execution, but it sent nothing back. So it's printing none. Let's send something useful back. This should be the number of whoever just won. It was none, and if you're watching down here, it was none until I clicked here, and then it sent back a one. Now I know there's these bugs where I can change it. It's still none, and I'll click again and now it's sending back a 2 because now it's the circles that won the game. So <clears throat> I really should send back return the end one or two of the, the winner, player number of the winner. Something like that. Okay, so we should be clear about, we should be clear in our uh, comments here. This is a multi-line comment. We can change it to the triple quote if we want. It's really, really important to have good comments in these functions. It's just a start. I am trying to say what it's doing and trying to say what it returns. So uh, that's a triple quote kind of multi-line comment in there. So now look at our draw loop. I feel like this is much more, much, much cleaner, much better organized. Um, we could continue looking through here to see if there's anything else that could be turned into this. This could be turned into a function as well, I think. Um, don't forget we need that global turn to be part of it as well, because this bit of code is the only thing that's trying to change the turn variable. So I'm going to call that alternate turns or next turn, whatever you think makes the most sense. And it happened here. And let's just make sure everything's running still. You might have a, a preference for where these functions go. I mean, right now I'm kind of mixing mouse pressed and my custom functions and draw. I'm just kind of mixing them all together, but maybe you have an order that you want. But I think that's, that's you know, I think, I think all of these functions now, you know, are, this is the longest one, I think, which is not that long. And I, I do believe our program is much more manageable at this point. I think I'll stop it there. I'm going to continue in the next video right from this point. But I'm going to stop here. I'm going to deal with some bugs in the, in the next video because I know those are going to be a little tricky to deal with as well. And in doing so, I, I think I'll get some modes working where we can end the game. But you first should do a similar set of refactoring. And while you're refactoring, do your best to get some good descriptive comments happening in your code.